I'm deeply troubled by the recent admissions by the former Leader of the House, the Member for North East Somerset, uh, regarding the introduction of mandatory voter ID. Yes, is this voter ID idea really fighting fraud or just suppressing votes? But anyway, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. And as you can see, that was Labour MP Dawn Butler, who had asked for a point of order, and as you heard, and was on the day after our Jacob Rees-Mogg revealed the dark truth about voter manipulation and gerrymandering after the local election disaster. And as you will see, she wasn't the only one to speak up about this scandal of the manipulation of election integrity. Enjoy. Point of order, Dawn Butler. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm deeply troubled by the recent admissions by the former Leader of the House, the Member for North East Somerset, uh, regarding the introduction of mandatory voter ID, mm. which have raised the prospect that ministers may have misled the country about the intentions of their voter identification policy in the Elections Act 2022. Yesterday, Madam Deputy Speaker, the former minister admitted that the proposal was a deliberate attempt to manipulate electoral outcomes in favour of the Conservative Party, a strategy he termed as gerrymandering. In other words, Madam Deputy Speaker, the deliberate bending of electoral rules or boundaries for partisan gain. He said it backfired, however, in the recent local elections. Mm. It is deeply concerning to see the blatant could be politicisation of policy and organisation intended to ensure the fairness and security of our democratic process. A recent report by the Omnices for Byline Times indicates that the new rules may have deterred up to 2 million people wow. to vote in the May elections. The justification, Madam Deputy Speaker, for the policy was to combat mm. voter fraud. It seems to me there's a real possibility that the only fraud could be this government. And I just wonder if, Madam Deputy Speaker, you can advise me whether I should report this to the Parliamentary Standards Commissioner and the police. Mm. Well, uh, first of all, um, uh, can I ask the uh, Honourable Lady if she has notified the um, uh, Honourable Right Honourable Member that you intended to raise this? Right. At the Conservative Conference. Okay. Um, and I just saw the loons opposite. They seem to think that the suppressing of votes is far less of a crime than Don Butler not notifying our ghost of Christmas past, that she's going to bring up his lack of election integrity. First of all, I should say that um, if she is intending to pursue this through the Parliamentary uh, Standards Commissioner or to the police, she shouldn't really be raising it um, in the House. Um, so she might like to reflect on that. Um, the, uh, I, I'm sure that... Um, the right honourable gentleman she refers to will have heard her comments. She's put her concerns on the record. Um, and I suggest that at this point, given that I'm sure the Treasury bench will uh, report back what she has said, that we leave it at that. Now, I don't know whether Don Butler was serious about notifying the police or being a bit wee cheeky, I suppose. But I'd love it if she did. Can you imagine our mule in pencil being dragged out into a black mariah? Cuffs on. I know it will happen, but it'd be funny. But one thing was certain: if our Madam Deputy Speaker thought that she had heard the last of our gerrymandering Lord Snooty, she was very much mistaken. Point of order, Helen Morgan. Uh, point of order, Helen Morgan. Madam Deputy Speaker, um, further to the point of order just raised by the Honourable Lady, I think I speak for a number of members of this House in saying that I was appalled yesterday when I heard that the Right Honourable Member for North East Somerset, a former Cabinet Minister, suggested in his speech to the National Conservative Conference that the introduction of voter ID was an attempt by the Government to gerrymander. Madam Deputy Speaker, during my urgent question on the 21st of February this year, the Minister for Local Government declared that it was a myth that is some sort of suppression. So the comments from the Right Honourable Member for North East Somerset therefore contradict the Ministers and I wonder whether you might advise whether, he has received, whether you've received notice of the Minister coming to the House to correct the record or otherwise clarify this point and if not, how might we achieve that? Uh, well, I'm grateful to the Honourable Member for 
um, giving notice of her point of order. Um, she would have heard my previous comments on this. Um, uh, I and Mr Speaker, as far as I am aware, have received no notification um, of uh, a minister coming to make a statement uh, about this. Um, and it is up to ministers to decide, having looked at points that are raised, whether there is any clarification that they may wish to make. She, once again, has put her views on the record, and the um, Treasury bench, who is clearly going to be very busy this afternoon, um, will have heard, and I am sure will uh, notify the relevant minister of the points that have been made. Thank you. Oh, it's clearly obvious that the speaker cannot do much, if anything, on this situation. But it really does highlight how our democracy is certainly under threat, isn't it? Constantly, if not daily, I should imagine. But one thing is for sure, it's either Jacob Rees-Mogg is telling the truth that this was a serious attempt at voter suppression after saying the opposite before. Or Lee Rowley, Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for Local Government and Building Safety, is telling the truth about trying to stop voter fraud. Cannot both be right, can they? And the thing is, with over 2 million voters disenfranchised to vote because of this, I always wondered at the time how many of this, these people, uh, due to this ridiculous idea of overcomplicating the voter ID, ID situation, were many, how many were Tory voters and how much that would bite them on the backside. And judging by the local election results, I get the feeling it clearly did, didn't it? <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.